please. Yeah. Judy Nelson. Yes. Tom Coons. Here. Emily Leach. Here. Andrea Anderson. Here. Aaron Cavanaugh. Here. Let's do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Comments from visitors this evening on things that are on the agenda. I didn't look at the agenda. From visitors. Seeing none, we will move along. The consent calendar this evening consists of um, our January minutes and uh, the enrollment information that we received. I move to accept the consent calendar as is. Second. Uh, okay, we have a motion. Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. So we have um, announcements and communication. We'll get the superintendent's update. We'll see if he's in full voice. Uh, all right, I'll do the best I can. Um, first is just a, a, it's nice to get the budget done and on its way. So uh, thank you to the board and the budget committee for, for cooperating with that so well and collaborating so well. Uh, also, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out to the deliberative session. That is really important to get your input. So anybody that showed up there, thank you very much. And make sure that you grab a friend and come down and vote and, and continue the process. We have been dodging some snowstorms. Um, so far, so good. We've, we've uh, had some delays, but the timing has been such that we've, we've been able to get in. So. Uh, let's hope that we can, can keep that going for at least another month or so. <laughs> um, and also in your packet, uh, Marshwood Star Time Community Forum, just so the public knows, um, Marshwood is talking about possibly starting uh, school later, having a later start time, so they're doing some community forums to get public input. <clears throat> Uh, and there's another one on Wednesday, February 27th at 7 p.m., and that's at the Marshwood High School Learning Center. So if anybody would like to take part in that and provide some input, um, they've, got, they've got the forums for that. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Uh, all, all good information. And yes, it was our first first time we did uh, uh, the, the um, deliberative session on a Tuesday night in a long, long time. And, um, it, it seemed pretty well attended, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying to remember last year, and I don't really remember how many people were there, but I feel like, I mean, it's about par for the course. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel as though the Tuesday night made it significantly less, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. and that's something to keep in mind as we move forward. Mm -hmm. um, all right, principal's update from... Uh, so I included a number of things in my report, but I just wanted to highlight a couple and um, pass along a couple of other things that may not be on here. So on the second page under the school events, February 27th, the third one down says PTO Astronomy Night before weather date. We've actually had to shift Astronomy Night to that date, uh, not because of poor weather last night, um, but the availability of the folks from the New Hampshire Astronomical Society that are coming in. Um, they try to do two sessions a week with various schools and other communities. Um, and that night was a backup day for another town. So they had to use that night with another town first. So February 27th, 6 o'clock. And hopefully the weather will cooperate because... Um, spring forward will be coming a couple weeks later, which will make it very difficult for us to actually get this event in this year. So it'll probably be a cancellation if we can't get in on the 27th. That's one thing I noticed that there was, it was still, we could still see light on the horizon driving over here. Yeah. Today. So it's, uh, yeah. it's getting there. Um, just an update on the Marshwood events that are sprinkled through here. Um, Tuesday, January 22nd, I took our two fifth and sixth grade teachers over to Marshwood Middle School for half a day, and we were able to go into a couple of classrooms, a sixth grade math classroom and a seventh grade math classroom. 
Um, we got to talk with the uh, middle school math teacher who's actually working on the math assessment for our sixth graders to take before they go into middle school and uh, had some good conversations with him about their new math program that they're using, which is illustrative math. Um, if you Google illustrative math, it's an online program. It's completely free, um, designed by teachers, and that was put out, you know, as a resource for other professionals across the country and the world. Um, and they have picked that up and have been using it in their middle school math classes. Um, and the one thing that our teachers commented on and were impressed by were because they had seen um, the prior program that they used, which is very, was very different than our program. Um, they thought that this program lends itself to be similar in methodology. The teachers would pose a lot of questions. Um, students would come back with answers. Um, and then they would be um, asked to explain how they got their answer more than whether it was just a right or wrong answer, um, which is a lot of what we do here in our math classes too. So they thought that the transition for our kids might be a little bit easier with this type of math program. And coming up right after vacation, our sixth graders have been invited over to the middle school for a talent show. Um, I had talked to Principal Bourbon way back in the summer about getting our kids over there once or twice. Um, so he invited us to that, um, talked to the kids today and gave them permission forms. Um, so they're excited about starting the process of becoming middle schoolers. And we are setting up something in April where Principal Bourbon will come over here with a couple of former RGS students to talk to our sixth graders, um, give them preview, answer questions that they have let the former students talk to our students about you know, some of the challenges they might have had, some of the exciting things that they've participated in over there, um, just to you know, give them kids their own age that are you know, going through and what the transition might be like. Excellent. I, I have a question on the, uh, the illustrative uh, ma math. Uh, you said that everyone felt that our, our, our students would have an easier transition. But that's not the reason they did it, right? I mean, they moved that way because they felt it was the right way to move educationally? Yes, they, they, to, they didn't... Um, they weren't doing it for our benefit. No. They were doing it because they feel it's the right way to go. Yeah, they were looking to transition to a new program to use for math. Um, and, and they did a lot of research, like schools do, when they were changing programs and found that not only was this cost effective, you don't have to purchase workbooks, you don't have to purchase textbooks when they you know, fall apart. Um, everything is online, the worksheets are online, the um, teacher guides are online. Um, but they also felt that the, the way it was presented to students is the way that math is going. Um, and they felt that it was the right thing to do for their school. It sounds very interesting. Take a look at it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, nope, that's okay. A um, couple of other things. Today uh, we had our invention convention. Um, students were offered the chance to um, create their own inventions. Um, there are specific guidelines that they had to follow, and they could work either individually or in pairs. Um, and typically we have you know, half a dozen or so kids that are interested and um, they all get recognized and all get moved on to the state level invention convention. Um, so this year we had 16 entrants, which um, staff members said was a lot more than in the past couple of years. Um, a lot of parents on site, you know, watch, looking at what their kids have done, listening to their presentations. We actually had to vote this year because we couldn't send everybody on. Uh, but we do have a handful of students that have um, been voted to move on to the state level invention convention, I think either in March or April. Um, so Jill Booten is our, a paraprofessional that heads that up each year, and she's going to provide families of the winners information on how to register if they're interested in going. And also today, um, we were um, the hosts for the NAEP assessment, um, National Assessment of Educational Programming, I believe, is what the uh, acronym stands for. Um, it's, the, it's a national assessment that came about years ago, and schools across the country get selected. Uh, we were one of the lucky ones.
comes to be selected this year. So our fourth graders, it's a fourth grade assessment. Um, and so folks from the NAEP organization come in and provide the assessment to the kids. Um, it's all on an iPad. Um, kids were selected randomly to either do a math assessment or a reading assessment. Um, and um, their scores get compared to scores from other fourth graders across the United States. So at some point in the spring, I believe we get results um, for our students. Uh, it's not our state assessment that comes later in the spring. This is um, just one of those extra assessments that come along every once in a while. And then the last one is just a reminder, invitation to uh, the school board and the public. Um, Zeusical is our drama production this year, coming up in a couple of weeks, March 8th and 9th, a Friday and Saturday evening. Six o'clock will be the production, and we decided this evening at a meeting that doors will open to the gym at 5.15. Um, and I believe tickets are five dollars for adults, three for ch students, for children. I think that's what it was. Right. It's good. I think that's all I have, unless you have questions. Do you have any questions for Ms. Wilkerson? Now this is good timing. We'll move on to our uh, Marshwood student rep. Uh, Nick Garrity is here today, and, and and it may not be on your thing to report about, but also we would like your your um, take on the sort of the late start discussion this week. That, that the folks are going to have over if you have a take on it. Okay. So go ahead, Nick. I guess I'll start off with the whole day start discussion. Um, <clears throat> last year, we were given a survey about like all the students, and I think everyone in the district was given a survey about what how they feel about the start time and if they feel <clears throat> they should be moved back at all. And there were three options. One of them to move the start time at the middle and high school um, up, I think, 20 minutes, and then one moved it up an hour or so. And personally, I feel um, it's not going to help a whole lot if the start time gets changed because students naturally are going to think, like, oh, I need, like, seven hours of sleep or six hours of sleep, and they're just going to go to bed. Um, when they get that amount of time. So I don't think it's really going to change um, how much sleep students are getting. But I just feel like, naturally, if you wake up in the morning, an hour later, you're just going to feel better throughout the day. Um, I know there are some conflicts with like parents working and needing to pick up their kids, and um, conflicts with after-school activities as well. But personally, I think starting a little later in the morning would be helpful. So I guess that's my take on it. Thank you. Um, I don't know exactly um, the results of the survey, because I think they just stayed within, um, like in the superintendent's office. I don't know if they got released to the public at all, but I'm assuming um, most people voted to just keep it at the same time, because I think that's just working how it is. I believe the hearings are on um, 20 minutes late, or leaving it as it is. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, so those must have been the top two choices. Mm -hmm. They did release the results. Oh, they and did. Out of that, mm -hmm. they the board and the committee came to that decision that those would be the two options that they would get okay. the public input on. Yeah. That's, that seemed like what was going to happen. Um, so, Obviously, Megan's not here, um, but she did send me some stuff this month to talk about. Sports stuff, um, girls basketball is 14 and 4 right now, so they're doing pretty good. They're third in the main southern district, and they are moving on to the playoffs. Um, boys basketball is 6 and 12, so they're not doing as well, and their season is over. <laughs> yeah. They didn't do too well this year. 
indoor track, their season is also over, but everyone did very well this season. Um, hockey right now is five and nine. They're not likely to make the playoffs, but they still have a few more games left, so there is a chance. Um, and we also have the unified basketball at the high school. I don't know if you guys have heard about that, but it's yeah, where we're aware of it. Summer's worth also does yeah. say unified, so we've yeah. right. Um, and they have two more games left this season. And then for other things, she wanted to have me let you guys know that there's a one-act play coming up in late March, which is just another play that the high school puts on every year. And graduation time has been set for seniors on June 7th this year. And that date is quickly approaching. I know all the seniors are counting down the days. And so then, does that mean that's the last day for seniors? June that's 7th? when they'll graduate. That's when oh, that will actually be their graduation. Yes. Mm -hmm. graduation. Thank you. So they get out a couple weeks before us, and then they'll have their senior exam week. And then they just get to end school, I think, a week or two before we do. And then they graduate on the 7th. And I think right now we're expected to end on the 11th or 12th of June, I believe. So their graduation is before we even end school. Mm. Um, other stuff that I want to talk about, midterm week went by. Um, we had <coughs> all of our exams. The week went well. Uh, and now quarter three is um, going on, and we're almost halfway through quarter three actually. So we're quickly approaching the end of the year. Our February break is next week, unlike New Hampshire schools. And I also wanted to talk about the district musical idea that yes. I had been talking about, um, which again is the idea that the students here at Rollinsford Grade School could try out for the district musical for Marshwood. Um, and that musical and um, includes students from the elementary school all the way up to the high school in the district. Um, I sent an email to Miss West, who is the teacher in charge of the musical at the high school. She hasn't responded yet, but um, I told her she could contact me or Principal Hartford, um, as we had talked about. And um, I've been through the transition, obviously, from the school the grade school all the way up to the middle school and then the high school. So I know that it can be difficult for some students and I feel like this um, this idea, if it goes all the way through, can be really helpful for some students, especially those who are involved in like theater and stuff like that. Um, and I will keep everyone updated on that once I hear back. That's excellent and it was really thoughtful of you, I think, to come up with an idea that would help. Help, help that along. Very fun. Thank you. That was all I have. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Do you have plans for your vacation? Um, I might be going to New York City. We'll see. Might be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well, thank you very much, Nick. As you know, you're welcome to stay, but we also know you're a busy young man. So, uh, thank all you very right. much for your update tonight. Any thank other you. questions for Nick? Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. So one of the uh, things the next on our discussion item is the uh, March 21st uh, Literacy Night, and we did all receive, as board members, we received an invitation to come, and the invitation um, also, I think, invited us if we felt like we wanted to do any uh, uh, readings or anything. So. Um, We'll let that be individual decisions on folks. I just wanted to make sure it's still in our... I offered to help in the frames. Who's the monkey to read a book? I will read a book. Or not. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, so I, I, I think, uh, so what I, all I'm saying is that I think individually if we can get back to the, mm -hmm. on the invitation, so do it. that is quickly coming up too, I realize. It's, um, <coughs> I'm not sure I saw the invitation. It, it came to our SAU um, email. 
so I did respond. I did respond. So well, you were very good. At least I'll go for it. I can represent <laughs> us. I might have sent a thank you for it. I can't even remember if I did that. But, um, um, I will respond. Anyway, if I just keep it on everybody's radar. Thank you. I did. So you don't have to take some pressure off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some, someone's, been, someone's been back in touch. Thank yeah. you, Andrea. Yes. <laughs> Once in a while, I like get it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was just a, a sort of a reminder to all of us. The next discussion item is sort of um, to discuss what we might want to do for the election. We want to do a mailer. Um, last couple of years, I know that um, Emily has sort of taken the point on a, this is the, it's been very factual. This is, this is the warrant. Why does it matter? And what's, and what's the impact? Uh, we've had those for the last couple of years, I think, maybe longer. Um, and we've done it. I don't know if we even sent it as a mailer last year. I don't know if we, if we did. Yeah. We did. Right. So I mean, so if we want to do a mailer, if we want to put that, post that kind of thing. I mean, so just throw it out. What, what we think we might want to do. Well, do we want to each write something down about what we presented, and that way it breaks it up so everyone has just a little piece, mm -hmm. and then um, combine it into something. Hopefully one page-ish that we can mail out and that we can post online and put a link to from the town blog thing. Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. So 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 let's do that and what is our deadline to get it to you, I guess, right? Mm, what day is the twelfth. The twelfth. Yeah. <laughs> so about a month. But it's yeah. so uh, but the I mean soon. If we're going to do a mailer, we need yeah. to have it ready a, a, a solid yeah. week before because it, it'll yeah. go out of the SAU office and they have to, you know, they might need folding. And, you know. So maybe by the end of next week? End of next week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. From today? It is vacation week. I'm sure we're all going to have tons oh, of yeah. time. Oh, yeah. Plenty. All right. So, so the ones that we presented on... Yes. A couple blurbs of why does it matter, kind yeah. of. That, that's the thing. And if, if people want to look up last year's... Um, I, I, I have them. I have hard copies somewhere. I, 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 you do. <laughs> I have last year's. I can send them around. Okay. If you could keep it to the one side of the paper, so when we fold it, we can do the bulk mailing on the. Yeah. So we could be just folded and easily mailed. Like yes. That. Or, or at the very least, one and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Each our own. I'm writing down here. Each By two twenty one, right? Okay. And 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 we're going to try to and we're, it'll be a mailer and it'll go out uh, that week before the week before or whatever the time set on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds very good. Um, I have one more. That was quick. It's always nice when we have a precedent to go on, right? Yeah. That, that we like. Uh, technology <coughs> infrastructure update. I see we have our technology yeah. infrastructure. A rare sighting, right? <laughs> this evening. So, uh, Tom, does everyone know Tom Lavelle? Mm -hmm. You're on the board, and okay, Melinda's our note taker. This is Tom Lavelle. Right? Hello. <laughs> do, you I want, guess. do you want me to introduce? Do you want? However, you want to do it. Yeah, I'll turn it over to Rich. Okay. I, know, I know they have been working mm -hmm. diligently on putting this together, so I'll turn it over to you. So. If you recall, when we went through the budget process, we increased the internet line and talked about increasing our capacity uh, because of the amount of technology that we brought into the building over the last couple of years. Um, so we, have, we, I say we, but it's been Tom, um, has gone out and gotten a few bids um, and has put together a little presentation. He and I sat and reviewed it. Um, and then we sat down with Dr. Gadonsky to determine what our next steps were. Um, and we have um, Tom here to just share the information and I believe make a recommendation on how to move forward from this point um, so that we don't lose our, our bids that we've received. Okay. Uh, so did everybody get a copy of the package? Yes? Okay. Um, so inside the package, uh, it kind of goes through and it tells you where we're at right now with Comcast. Comcast is our current provider, and we have a, a 150 meg download, 30 meg upload, uh, asynchronous line. Now, technology-wise, asynchronous, synchronous are the two terms that are used for internet access delivery. On page three, I try to explain those to you to hopefully 
uh, that you understand what the difference is between the two and that synchronous is a, a better option for uh, business or in this case our school uh, to allow teachers and students to be able to access and get the information they want without slowdowns, interruptions and things. Uh, so uh, again, currently we are at uh, 150, uh, 30 meg up, we at $300 per month. Um, so what I've done is, in order to get ready for this, two years ago I went through the E-rate process and I applied for it my first time through. Fortunately, 35 years of government services taught me how to deal with government forms. So <laughs> I was able to get through it and we did get a little bit out of it. Actually our wireless system, 40% uh, of it was paid through the E-rate system. So I've gone back again uh, in order to improve our uh, internet access. We do have uh, slowdowns and problems occasionally during the day. Teachers will try to download or stream something and it's just not there. Because we've gone from having two computers in each classroom when I started doing Rolter grade school in 1998 to over 250 devices on the network. So we've greatly increased our, our footprint uh, in the technology uh, area. So in doing that, I've gone back through and I filed what's called a Form 470 with E-Rate. So we have applied for the grade school. Um, I've filed the paperwork and we have applied for this E-Rate again this year. In doing that, that allowed us to bring in bids. And they come in based on the government E-Rate program. So I could not go out and solicit a bid at that time. They had to voluntarily send us the bids. That said, they can call me after that and ask questions and change or, or enhance their bids in any way based on what I tell them, but I can't tell them too much. Um, so what we've done, and skipping uh, page one, two, three, um, it, it talks about the bandwidth requirements, what the FCC put out in 2018 for bandwidth requirements, the uh, Brookings Institute study, and then uh, what the Education Superhighway folks, which is a nonprofit group that works with schools and libraries to work on E-rate issues, what they tell you to plan for for growth on your internet access requirements. Um, next page was just the, the Form 470, what I told, what I put down on the 470 as far as requirements. And after that, the bids received. We received one from First Light, which is a company out of Portsmouth, Consolidated Communications, formerly Fairpoint, and uh, Citronet, which is a company out of Texas. Unfortunately, they just sent us a pricing sheet and nothing specific to the 470 that I applied for. So we had to discount their bid uh, pretty much immediately on that. Uh, on the cable side, because in the 470 world, there's two, two forms you fill out, one for fiber, one for cable. All the bids I received were on the fiber side. I received zero bids on the cable side, which means, yes, Comcast did not bid at all on anything. Uh, of the bids that we received back, uh, We've gone through them, I've gone through them with uh, Rich and Dr. Gondowski, and we determined that First Light uh, was priced just higher than Consolidated, uh, so I've narrowed this down and given you a couple of slides on uh, total cost of ownership. As far as the contract length, which is 36 months, with two options that Consolidated gave us. One of the options has a low non-recurring cost. So it would be low out of pocket initially at $900 cost, but the monthly cost is higher. The second option is a higher non-recurring cost or NRC with a lower monthly recurring cost. For them, they're just playing with the numbers. Mm -hmm. For us, what it means is since I've been through this before and I did put in the budget for this year a $5,000 item for non-recurring cost, it's in our budget. So we did plan for this. Um, and so. They uh, actually gave us one that had a $5,000 non-recurring cost and then a lower, I believe it was $815 per month recurring cost. Both those figures, as long as the E-rate is approved, will be, we will pay 60% of that and the government pays 40%. So in page after that, I believe it says, our actual uh, non-recurring costs on the higher non-recurring cost item would only be $3,000, even though we budgeted five and then our monthly cost of $815 would be reduced by 40%. We'd end up paying the, uh, uh, was it 500, no, 400, about $490 would be our cost. Uh, we've put in the budget for 500, so. Uh, the chart there shows the 
contract length total cost of ownership. What I also did is I kind of spread that out a little bit further. I said, even though we're only entering a contract for 36 months, we can continue just doing this month, month to month afterwards. And I played it out to a five-year uh, time frame, which allows us to see that actually paying a little bit more now for non-recurring cost will end up saving us money in the long run. That lower monthly cost playing out past those, uh, in sometime in the fourth year it ends up paying us back. Um, so uh, at, at that, um, last page was just that uh, as far as numbers, uh, we actually did better than uh, the education supply where folks were able to provide me with what Barrington has right now. They have a 300 meg circuit and are paying over $1,000 a month. So we're going to be looking at a 500 meg circuit, which is capable without any changes other than us telling them and paying a little more money, could go up to a whole gigabit service. Uh, but they're paying over $1,000 a month. So we are below even what Barrington is paying right now uh, in their, their uh, internet access. Um, cable didn't uh, uh, provide a bit. They, I can now, because a certain time frame is gone, go and solicit cable bids. Um, I would say it wouldn't be worth it because there are also E-rate restrictions on that. And because of the E-rate restrictions, I couldn't solicit anything more than what we already have. Mm -hmm. So it's, it doesn't help us at all. Um, so, uh, so ultimately, what I would say is, uh, from my standpoint, is the, the higher NRC, since we have budget for it, and the monthly recurring cost falls within our budgeted amount, uh, I would recommend that we go ahead and, and sign on for a 36-month contract with that. Uh, versus the lower NRC and the higher monthly cost. So. I particularly enjoy the high tech way you presented this. You know? No, no, just to, but I can get a smart board installed in here if you want. It's making a joke. It's making a joke. Um, it's in color. It is. And it wasn't included in our packet. Yes. Um, yes, and some have been looking electronically, so that's good. That's yes. good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you, you said it, it can be it can go 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 to five years. Is that like without any additional? Just saying yes, we want to continue for the sixty months. Once the thirty six months expires, we are then month to month. Okay. At that point, and uh, at that point, we can request an increase in speed. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, because of uh, historically what's been happening, and as you can see from the Barrington rate, mm -hmm. uh, prices are coming down mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in three years, hopefully that price will be a little bit less, and whether or not we continue with the 500 meg circuit, or say we now need 750 mm -hmm. or a full gigabyte on that circuit, we can then apply for and then get a new rate on that, uh, and that would be going month to month. We could then decide we want to go back and renegotiate another 36 month and try for anything that. Okay. So we have options after that. Okay. Yes. Other questions? Clear, I think they're all. It is very clear, mm -hmm. and um, and so I think we should we be taking action on this this evening. Um, I mean, is this something that we're ready? Yeah, to if you're ready to make on? a motion, you can do that. Ready? It's built into next year's budget. Right? Yes, it, it so nothing starts until July first, including anything that. But how soon do you have to like accept a bid and say yes, we're? In they're looking to for us to accept at any time. They're basically, what the non-recurring cost does is it brings the fiber line from the railroad tracks, because that's where it's at right now, mm -hmm. down to the building. Well, what happens if the budget doesn't pass? So we talked oh, about that <laughs> in our... <laughs> Thank you, Katie. We <laughs> talked about that in our meeting, mm -hmm. uh, because we increased for the total cost to come out of the internet line. Mm -hmm. um, so we looked at Tom's budget if we fall back to a default mm -hmm. budget, um, and his dollar amounts that are in the other technology lines would cover for the infrastructure piece um, and the internet, even though the internet line would be lower in the default budget, um, we could still do it and get what we need technology-wise in the building um, that way. And, and so I guess another question is, 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 it, um, is it best to say, yes, we're ready to go sooner than later, or, I mean, um, Obviously, they have to be able to run the fiber off. And, uh, yes, from from consolidate standpoint, they want to they want to have us commit so that they can put it on their schedule, so they can schedule their time to get that done as soon as possible, mm -hmm. so that on July first, it's ready to go. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah.
And I had another question. Where did it go? The, and, and obviously, it, seem, it seems, it, you've already answered this question, but I just want to be sure, uh, with that 50% that, um, a year increase that's recommended, be able to, to, to be able to um, expand by 50% each year, whatever that slide that was. I don't know if I include that slide in here yeah. or not. I mean, um, I mean this, this contract, it would cover that, but obviously we have I, I may have, but um, I, I did have at one point... The 50% uh, growth, sorry. The, uh, yeah, the 50% growth. Uh, basically, this would give us... First year, more than enough. Second yep. year, more than enough. And as we transition to third, we'd be at that line. Yeah, and then, and then and we then, have the ability to... Right, with the ability to move on. Okay. And that's, of course, estimates based on education right. superhighway information um, that may be not enough or too much. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely at the, at the rate we're going right now, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely looking at needing that bandwidth. Mm -hmm. The... Are they able to start running the fiber prior to July 1st? Yes. And then, and they then take that on as their, uh, I don't know how it was explaining. Basically, if something were catastrophic would happen, even us signing now, we still have the right up until July 1st to back out of this. The, the reason I ask that is, is there a way that we could pay the one-time non-recurring fee out of this year's budget and start running the fiber prior to July 1st with the actual contract starting July 1st with the monthly payment? The only problem will be E-rate. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we want to uh, reap the benefits of E-rate, which is a 40% discount for us, then we have to wait till July 1st. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we do want to reap the benefits. Right. We definitely do. And $2,000 savings, yeah. yes. Right. We definitely um, but you said we have, the, we have the ability to back out if we, if we had to. The, for yeah, the, there is the ability that if something catastrophic mm -hmm. would happen. It, it, it seems like... I mean, obviously, we need to have the technology to support it. Uh, that's my way of thinking. Yes. So I think um, the motion would be to, um, and, and who is it that enters into the contract? Is it is it uh, is it you, Dr. Janowski, or is it uh, Tom himself? Who does it? Who, who enters into it? Um, it would be the it would be the Rollinsford School District. Okay. So it would just be a contract, and I, I can, with approval, I can sign off on that. Yeah. So I think the motion would be to um, to, to uh, approve the um, grade schools enter into a contract with consolidated communications. communications based on the um, proposal of the five thousand dollars. Is that time that is that covered? Yeah. Yeah. I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Nice. It's good presentation time. You made it very clear, I think, to all of us. And it was sort of what the yeah, thank you for all the legwork that yeah. you've done. It, it, it really a there's, there's still a little more. i got a form 471 to fill out now. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody well, else? Thank you for all your going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's appreciated. It sounds, like, sounds like it'll be a nice step up. That's all. All right. Um, the next discussion item is the uh, draft uh, policy, draft uh, draft policy of a student fundraising event. Now, I um, I also emailed off to all of you earlier this week, um, sort of my my thoughts on it, just so you know, uh, just so you knew where it was coming from. I asked uh, Dr. Ganowski to look into this. Um, I had hoped that it would be a broader than a student fundraising policy, that it would be more a fundraising policy sort of for basically from anyone who works in the building or is in the building or also any outsider to my rent the building or anything, that we actually had some sort of policy. And mostly, um, as, as I believe I said in my email, partly so that the school board is aware of some of the things that happen, all the fundraising events that happen within the building. Um, because the general public is going to believe we know what they are and, and that we sanction them. And so I think it's important that we, therefore, have a policy so that we can indeed know what they are. So this is here just for discussion. We don't have to move forward with it. We can discuss it uh, as long as we need to. Um, so my question is about having, having to have, to have <laughs> staff present. Or, I don't know how it's worded, I'm trying to find that. Where is that? 
Um, you must have a school staff member in attendance. Mm -hmm. um, and is that you? I mean, is that for insurance reasons? I mean, um, what would be? Remember, this is a JJE. Oh, J school. is your student policy. Yeah, student. So, this, okay. so this is student, and so that so that if we don't, yeah, so that don't, makes sense. If we okay. make it, if it, if, we, if it's not a student policy, then that, then that might not have to be in there. Okay. And and the other, th you know, and, and whether or not we even need a policy, and you know, those are other things that these are all things that we can. Yeah, think, I don't know think if we about. get to a point where we could, you know, like. Some of these at corridors we could lock off. I've seen in other schools that I've been to where they have gates and they can. <laughs> now you're talking about if, if outside, if outside. Yeah, I mean, just if the community, you know, if we wanted to, you know, allow some more community and not necessarily have to have staff or paying staff to be here. And this is obviously right not for student uh, necessarily student families at that. Well, I mean, as it is, we have, you know, basketballs here and things aren't locked off. We have uh, town, yeah. meeting, town meetings and things aren't locked off. And we just, it, it, I mean, those are things I think we need to look at anyway. Yeah. It, a, way, a way to make the school, maybe more parts of the school more accessible, but other parts of the school, if that's so, not accessible. Because right. I think even with the basketball, we require that a, um, someone, the janitor or here, someone is here, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so... Um, and I don't know if that's for insurance reasons or. So is is there a policy available for a more broad fundraising? Yeah, I can I can get you one. I guess my question is, what are you trying to accomplish here? What what, what are you looking for with the policy? And I know part of what I'm what I am looking for is more a, 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 the school board being aware of fundraising activities because in a way it's under our umbrella that it's happening. So I mean, it's not, and and um, uh, there was something a, a few years ago where some fundraising was happening in the school that the board didn't really know anything about. Um, and so it's just and and then and community members started asking certain board members about it and it, you know and it, anyway it, it raised concerns. So. I think it's just important for us to know what's going on. So partly to know what's going on in terms of fundraising. Fundraising for the school or fundraising for an outside entity? Um, I, I think, I think either one. I think either one. Because if it's an outside entity, then it's, it's a facilities use form. It, it has, I mean, we just go through facility use, and that's your facility use policy. If, it, if it's a fundraiser that may be tied somehow to the school. Then Let's say the students are doing a fundraiser for some disaster relief. That would fall under something like this with a right. student fundraiser. We're not going to have them filling out a school. No, that would be. Right. That would have to be. See, any outside organization, like you said, it would be a school. They can do whatever they want. I mean, if they want to raise money, you know, we're, we're, we're leasing the room. We're not asking right. them what they're doing. We're well, just then we would look, then we would look and lease based on the, outs, the, the, the use form. So, so it's more a matter of what's happening in the school, which which is, is really. I'm still confused. Yeah. Do you, so. Is there a, like is for example the Friends of the Library have the, our race here? We fill out a building use form. Is it mm -hmm. so that would not be something that in the policy or envisioning that it would need to cover? Well, I, again, I think I think that it might be something the board should know about. As a board, we are not aware of that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that you filled out a building use form <laughs> yeah. um, and, and did that. So I, I do believe that it's important for the board to know. There may be things that that a group may wish to use the school for that. That that does not support um, the educational values of the community. But you said you were asked about this, or somebody was asked. Well, about this was a number. This was a number of years ago. Okay, but um, can and you just just without 
saying who it was. Can you just ask what exactly was the concern? Well, there and, and one of the reasons I also want electronic type uh, fundraising things too. It was a, a GoFundMe campaign was for for students here, and and it was promoted very heavily in the school. Okay. Um, and, and fundraising was done within the school for that, but the board had did not know about it. Yeah, that would fall under a student fundraising policy. But why? It wasn't a student doing it. But anything that come anything that comes into the school involves our students in any way, then then unless if somebody okay. if I had a GoFundMe page and and I did it on my own from my house, didn't advertise it through the school at all. I could do whatever I want and donate the money wherever I want. Mm -hmm. But if I'm coming into the school and saying, you know, handing flyers out and everything else, then I think that we take some responsibility for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, if it's a GoFundMe page for like a personal thing, it would not, this right. says it would be deposited in the student activity mm -hmm. fund. That would not be the case because a student activity fund has strict rules on what can be spent and deposited into those accounts. So, yeah. This is a, this is a generic. No, but I'm talking about that specific, something specific like that. A fundraiser for a student outside of here would not come to the building and into their student activity account. Yeah, well, yeah, these are good things to know. Right, right. We might want to just put this on the burner for another meeting, just to maybe we can all think of examples. Yeah. Because we can spend an hour here on yeah, this. I think this is a. And I and now I get what you're talking about. I mean, maybe there should be some, you know, guardrails. But I, um, it just it's vague. You know, if, if there's if some organization is doing a car wash or something or oh, yeah. something outside, and they tell us and they get a use permit, I don't care what they're raising. And, and but if there's a specific activity going on in the school, it's student sponsored. We've all had kids that have been involved in, you know, little, uh, you know, sort of fundraiser things. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if there was ever any question. Yeah, I can. How that up. all looks and feels. How much responsibility we have as a board. So maybe if we just think about it and examples and then. Decide what we think. I'll do some important. additional research too and bring you back some other policies that, that other places are using. I was going to say, do other schools have this? Yeah, I, think find it pretty easy. I, think, I think that would be really good. I mean, and there's a, I, I, I'm sure I mean, any of us who have ever worked in schools, I mean, always in the teacher's room, there's always a Girl Scout cookie sign up sheet. Yeah, right. But that's that's among the adults, so, that, so that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. But if it got to the kids and say, hey, kids, you know, uh, well, I think for, two, for it's extra also, four dollars, I'll give mean, you a, a box of I think you know you want kids to be you know civic minded. You know, it, it's a good event. It's not like, hey, we're just raising money so we can go to a Celtics game. You know, this is raising money for you know a charity, an organization, maybe something that ties into something they're learning in class. So I think that that that's beneficial. Uh, well, but again, if you're again, about I, parameters I, of what happens with the money. Where is the money kept? Is it, we sending it home with Susie, you know, at the end of the day, we never see it again. <laughs> you know, how are we tallying this? Yeah, I, you know? yeah I'm absolutely important. As, as Katie brings up, there are a lot of, there are a lot of uh, specifics about um, yeah. school funding yeah. stuff. <laughs> but also, we have to remember that um, what is a good civic-minded event for one parent may not be a good civic-minded civic event for another parent. And, yeah. and so we have to be very careful about, I think a school has to be very careful about what they present to students as, this is, this is the best thing in the world, this is, you know, no one can object to this when someone could object to it. And I think we well, have to be I careful think, about that. And that does bring up a good topic, but, you know, you're never going to get 100%. So I would not want Well, that's why it can't be, like, forced on kids. Right, and I don't think, uh, I don't think we would do that anyway. I mean, we would advise, you know, every parent knows about things that are, going on, you know, we're going to be doing this today, or we're going to be doing this next week, so if they had an objection, you know, their student doesn't have to be involved, but I would hate to think, well, okay, well, one student said no, or one parent said no, so we're canceling the whole thing. So like bake sales for student council, bake sales student councils, you know, raising money for student council, or, you know, 
And those are very specific because they are indeed, you know, money that's going into the school, you know, into the school's fund. <coughs> like so. But again, I mean, people can choose to participate or choose not to. Yeah, well, but that's a school function. I mean, mm -hmm. to, back, yeah, back to the Girl function. Scout cookies, you, you know, it, it, we shouldn't be having uh, Girl Scouts set up a table during recess and selling Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, that's something that we wouldn't allow, um, but... Well, know, are we allowing the teachers to bring in the list from their well, sons or daughters? As long as it stays raising, in the teacher's room. My yeah, if it's, if it's in the teacher's <laughs> room and it's just for adults, then, you know, I don't... But if, if it's involving the children at all, then that's a different step, yeah. so, right, so... I can certainly bring you back to more that kind of models. Thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, in any PTO events, we, we, we know about those. You guys are coming back and letting us know. You'll be filling out use forms for that one, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a difference between school-related mm, yeah. fundraising and not right. school-related fundraising. I just think we should all bring examples of things that we, you know, even the, the, you know, the most absurd, that we're eventually going to see this kind of stuff. I mean, the example <laughs> you brought is something you don't want to see a lot, obviously. So. That is kind of you know, off the deep path, but if it's something that everybody here is involved in, how do, you know how do we police it? So Bob will uh, bring, bring us back, uh, bring uh, other examples of that, and we can also think of some examples of what we, things that we definitely think we would not like to see. But. I don't believe in over legislating, and so you know, if, if we need it, we need it. If we don't, we don't. So I mean, I think that's uh, just for discussion. So, um, okay, we will move on now. Thank you. Uh, budget update. Yes. Um, so nothing really major expenditure-wise to report. Um, Bob and I did have a discussion possibly maybe at your next meeting, maybe us bringing, uh, we're going to talk to Rich and maybe bring a list of maybe items we might want to spend some money on. That's good and to get started. We get closer to the end of the year, so we'll look forward to that. Um, revenue, I'm keeping an eye on Medicaid reimbursement. We've only received $710 to date out of 10000 To me, it should be more than that halfway through the year. I did email Pam. Um, to find out, she was going to reach out to Multi State Billing, the company who administers that for us. So. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a very low yeah. amount. Of I mean, we have up, yeah. we have additional unanticipated revenue for this year, so I'm not over, you know, but it still is still concerning like that we haven't received, you know, a lot there. So, mm -hmm. um, I did note that I had sent out a draft ballot. It's complete. It's a, the official ballot's been sent, and um, they'll be printed and sent to the town. So that's good. Um, well, you're not going to print them. No, the company prints them. Oh, okay. Them to the to go through the machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, I, I, I didn't just make them and call them. I think the copy or not. Past, did we used to print them? A long time ago. Yeah. Oh, that was only three years ago. It was paper. Oh, yeah. Just more. Maybe. A long time ago. <laughs> no, company does it. We haven't had a machine for a long time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Many of us still remember counting votes with Joe Cohen. Yes. By 11s, by the way, not yeah. by 10s. So that's all done. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention: Citizens Bank. Um, I met with our rep. That's, that's our bank that we use. Um, the Rollinsford branch is closing. I don't know. Just as an FYI. Um, as of April 5th, they're going to be closing. They're reopening on the 8th, but they're not going to be a regular branch. It's going to be a self and assisted service advice center. So they're not going to, they're no longer going to do night drop coin orders or accepting deposits to that branch. So I figured I would let you all know. I if anybody uses that shocked. branch, I walked to that branch. Well, I, I there it is other person. locations in Dover, Summersworth, oh, two locations in Summersworth. Did they hire you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's the two we yeah. use at the school, so they wanted to meet with me so that I could let um, the school know in case they used it for their deposits and our food service and everything. So just so you all know, it's no longer going to be open as a bank. But ATM will be there, right? Or um, I believe yes, because it says accepting deposits non ATM. So I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not certain. You know what your advice there though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go cash <laughs> my money. No. But they can tell you where you can cash. Yes, they can advise <laughs> on which locations to go. Okay. So that was just an FYI for you in case you use that brand. That's a really interesting FYI. <laughs> wow. And that's all I know. Oh, Thursday right there. That's right. You're oh, dropping man. that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Not, I'm sorry. Don't you mess with her. This is the way to go. Oh, my but it's hard to get folding money online. It is. Yes. 
stuff. Yeah. We have, yes. I won't digress. We don't need that stuff anymore. You, All right. Well, anyway, um, I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> 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 this is one of the biggest news. <laughs> 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 some here in the school just so in case people want to look at the budget, parents coming in and whatnot. Um, I'm going to drop some off at the town hall and some at the library. So it'll be available to the public there. And we can add that to our write-up. Kind of thing. All right. Um, and we had the first, we, we did our uh, first review of the drone policy we did last um, Actually, we had a discussion about we had a drone discussion, policy that's right. in the last one, that's so right. this is back for first reading. That's right. Okay. okay. All right. So this <coughs> added the <coughs> stuff about during school hours and yes. school events. There's a small typo at the end of the last paragraph. It should be, but not limited to. Uh, yeah. Not lying. last sentence on the first paragraph, so that's, oh, oh yeah, I mean, why, I mean, what, <laughs> why does it matter where it's launched from? Well, it shouldn't, maybe it's six miles away, and if they're surveilling our students during school hours, I want them to be covered by this policy. Or a hundred miles away. Exactly. Okay. So, so we should that yeah. But if we strike uh, that last sentence. This prohibition applies to any. Mm -hmm. So if we don't mention launching at all, we it open. Any and all drones. Any and all drones. <laughs> Anything else? Does so this first reading, do we need to wait for the final next time around? Uh, yeah, we'll come back for a second reading. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, and then we have the second reading on uh, the other policies that are listed down here below. One, two, three, four, five of them. And these are all required or recommended? I believe required. Um, recommended. Really. recommended. It says right on the policy. Yeah, recommended. These are, these are all recommended by the uh, New Hampshire School Board Association. So, questions, thoughts? Then we can do a motion to um, accept them all at one, I think. All, all at once, I think. Mm -hmm. Can make a motion to accept the numbers. Mm -hmm. Can someone, can someone help me? IH. IH. BG. IH. 
HBG-R. <coughs> IJ. J J J. J R A. Motion to accept them as written. All second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. We have uh, future uh, our future meeting events. Uh, our our next school board meeting is uh, March 14th. That follows the March 12th election. Uh, at which time uh, there will be a, a one board member will be um, a new board member will be will be named at that time. Uh, and, and the SAU meeting on March 25th. Let's keep that in mind as well. All right. Um, that goes by. We have a very brief. Um, may, I, may I just ask one question? I'm sorry, did I miss new business? Yeah, you do. The first reading of the policy of drones. Oh. Is there something else? Was there any other? I just want to ask a question. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So um, the budget committee has brought up a couple of times um, an updated CIP for the school with quotes, um, and I'm wondering if. Uh, that is underway, or if we could get that underway. Um, we have a, a fairly old one now um, mm -hmm. with quotes on it, um, but I think maybe reprioritizing and putting some new things on there. Yeah. If you'd like, I can work with Rich and Dick and take the, the one that you've got already and put it into a, a spreadsheet, CIP form, and spread it over five to ten years and, and bring it back to the board for viewing. That would be great. Remember five to when, ten is good. When we did the budget process, when we were building the budget, that was one of the things that Dick had recommended that we do. And um, I think I mentioned at that time, around right after the budget was voted on we would then start that process depending on what monies we have for next year um, but yeah, we can put that but we can start that. yeah we can start putting that together yeah that's actually good to, good to get that yeah. um, out there and and while we're on that subject one of our uh, goals for um, for this year was um, <coughs> essentially to continue to work with town boards and uh, committees uh, to pool resources. And I know that we had had discussions about um, um, seeing if Dick Fortier would be uh, you know, work, work more closely with some of the town folks. And I know that um, both of you, I think, volunteered to at some point step in and sort of officially ask the select board or <coughs> yeah, we had. And I uh, just wanted to follow up on that, see where we were. We had brought back some things that are happening on the last meeting or the meeting before, um, some things that are working collaboratively with the town, already a list of, of things. So we can take it further than that if you'd like. I, well, I think, it, I think um, one of the things that I, I think would be very helpful to the town is that the town has no facilities person whatsoever. And uh, I've act I actually was approached a couple times around some of the, some of the meetings that we're having here, saying, "Boy, you have a facilities director, and boy, is there any way the town can tap into him?" We can reach out to so, the selectmen. So, it, it, but but that was all very unofficial, right? So if we could do something a little bit more official um, to think about, and again, it's up to whether or not Dick has the time, and I, I know he has a lot going on, but if there are ways that we can sort of help help out. Um, one of the things that has come up, the the, the boiler at the, uh, they're talking about having to replace the boiler at the uh, town hall. And, and and in meetings, what we hear is, well, the police chief says it needs to be replaced. <laughs> and it's like, well, uh, it'd be nice if someone who knew a little bit more about boilers than the police chief were actually saying these things. And I know that they, I think they have towns in oil also looking at it and stuff, but it would be nice to have someone be able to say that an expert has looked at it or someone who knows more of what they're talking about. I would just make a just a comment on that. If we're gonna do that, we need to make sure that he's compensated for this. That this is not just we're gonna be, you know, he's gonna be doing that and spending extra time there because you know obviously he works here. Um, 
and I think that you know I'm not saying you know anything that's unreasonable. I just believe that he should be compensated. It should be you know uh, something that he would say, yeah, absolutely. Why not? You know, he does I, a lot of work here, and I don't. We don't want to just stretch him too well, thin. I, I, I agree that it's not on top of what he does here. Either yeah. it fits into his time frame yeah. of work he's yeah. doing here, or and if it doesn't, then it doesn't, and it and, and we don't. Yeah, we, we don't. We don't. We don't want I don't to, know about right. the extent of. Absolutely, you do not of, want to overstretch you know, him. Those requests would be. Um, I know they don't have anybody working doing that kind of facility work. Maybe that would. have been a benefit to them years ago. We wouldn't have some of the issues of we have now us, in town. Yeah. But I think yeah. that you know he he's done so much here. It's been amazing. It's been so amazing. But we need to make sure that he realizes that this is not you know, part of his normal job duties. That this is something well, I'll be meeting with Rich and Dick about the CIP. So while we're having that meeting, we can have this discussion there as well. And, and, and get his feedback on whether or not it's something that he's uh, willing willing to do because it would be a it would be a, a, a time I don't know how it would work out with the town that would be something that select board would have to talk with with folks about well you could be contracted you know like I suppose but you know how does that work well that's something you know, that has to be found out his, you know and we don't know until we job find duties out. You know? mm. this is, I mean uh, clearly He's done so much here, and he would be a tremendous asset mm -hmm. any building he's working in. But I think it's, you know, he's only, there's only so much time in a day. And if he's working right. on something here, he really doesn't want to, I don't think he would want to commit to somewhere, you know, somewhere else. And, you know, because something's going on no, here. I, I agree. When I, when I think about it, I think maybe, 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 maybe a day a month. You know, but I don't know if the school can spare him a day a month. So again, we have to be right. We have to think about those things. Maybe it's a day every two months. Who knows? Anyway, anyway, some, something at least he's a resource in town that is he's getting to be known as a resource, as, as someone who really knows what he's doing. So, which is it comes as a uh, premium, though. Which is which is actually a good th a good thing that they're recognizing his work. So, so we'll, we'll move forward and see what he's what Dick thinks about it too. The dream. <laughs> it won't be, it'll be, it's a better deal. All right, any other, <laughs> uh, any other, um, anything else to be brought up under new business? No, no, it's fine. All right, we have a very, a very brief um, non-public that we will go into after closing comments from visitors. Nancy Dale. Um, it would have been really nice if Tom had been giving this information when we had the public hearing about all of the the um, the reason why you need the fiber optics and everything else. If he had been there at the deliberative and maybe said a little blurb about it then, and then maybe there could have been some questions done at that time. Thank you. Any other public comments? All right, any board comment? Tom, Emily? Um, well, we did not have anyone put their name on the ballot for school board. Um, and in, with your permission, I will say that uh, Judy did not put her name on the ballot because she was questioning her time commitments. Um, but has agreed to um, be a write-in, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, a write-in uh, candidate for the open school board position this year. So I just wanted to announce that. And we are very grateful. We are very grateful. We are grateful. And I appreciate that, that you've asked me to do it. I will, I, should I be elected, I will be spending my time looking for my replacement. So just so you all know that that will be that'll be part of my goal um, to happen as soon as possible. At least you didn't pull like a Lyndon Johnson on us. <laughs> if elected, I like that. And while and while we're on that subject, um, Tasha Botello was not here to sign up to be school district clerk, but she will is also open. She, she 
said, please announce that I, 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 I will serve if I get written in and get elected. So, Dr. Bartello will get, will get sort of that name out. You could put it on your mail. Maybe we could. Uh, anything else? Anybody else? And um, I guess since my future is somewhat uncertain, I, I will not uh, give my farewell speech uh, that I was going to give tonight. We're all, we're all spared that. <laughs> <laughs> We can and give it, and then you get an acceptance speech. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, hopefully. Um, all right. So, uh, so we do. We do have a brief uh, non-public. So um, th this meeting, we're moving to that roll call, please. It, it's under um, motion. Um, motion. We forget what it's under. It's under C. Yeah. It'll be under C. Under C. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Tom, motion. Aaron, second. The roll call to go in. Judy Nelson? Yes. Tom Kuhn? Yeah. Emily? Yes. Andrea yes. Anderson? Here. Yeah. Aaron? Yes. yes.